Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about some sports romances. I love me a good sports romance and this is definitely a trope I want to get more into this year because I just find myself loving so much of them and I need more in my life. I have a previous sports romance rec video if you want to watch it. It's going to be linked down below if you want even more recommendations if you haven't seen that video yet. But I have 10 more recs for you so let's get started. First I of course have to mention two of the Bergman Brothers books that have sports in them. I just realized that this book is upside down. Great job Avery. <laughs> anyway okay two Bergman Brothers books. So if you don't know about the Bergman Brothers series by Chloe Lees you need to get on it. They are so good. The first book in the series is Only When It's Us. So by the way, each book in the series is about a Bergman sibling falling in love. Louis Lisa is also just an amazing writer in general with amazing like chronic illness representation in all of her books and neurodivergence rep and mental health rep, honestly, like all, all three of them. So please pick her up. But anyway, this is book number one, Only When It's Us. This one is a soccer romance, both of them our soccer romances by the way. Um, so this is about Willa and Ryder and they are in the same college class. Willa is a soccer player for her college. She ends up missing one of the uh, days in class and she goes up to the professor and is like, hey, I need the notes. I missed class. He's like, okay, I don't have them. Just ask the dude who sits next to you or something because I don't have the notes. She's like, oh, fine. So she asks the guy next to her, hey, I missed class. Can I have the notes? He ignores her. And she's like, what the heck? This dude is so rude. She then uh, puts her foot in her mouth when she realizes this guy is actually deaf and he did not hear her. They also get partnered to work on some of the class projects together and their little animosity relationship at the beginning slowly turns into friends and then to lovers. There is a large portion in here discussing soccer, both of these. Like I feel like Chloe Lisa did great research on soccer or she already knew a lot about soccer. I really enjoy this one. It's definitely my least favorite by her, but I still loved it nonetheless. Like her writing just keeps getting better and better. I also want to mention really fast that book two, Always Only You by Chloe Lisa is also a sports romance, but I think I talked about it in the first part of this video like the first sports romance video I did so I didn't want to repeat but I do want to mention like I'm not forgetting this book this is also in the Bergman Brothers series but I think I already talked about it but this is a hockey romance between Frankie and Ren this is a grumpy sunshine where the heroine is the grump and the hero is the sunshine and he's been pining over her and been like saving himself for her like it is it's really good so I just want to mention that this one is also a sports romance in that series. Everything for you though is the most recent one, book number five, and another soccer romance. This is the romance between uh, Gavin and Oliver. Oliver right here is one of the Bergman siblings. Um, this is also age gap. So Gavin here has been a soccer superstar for a very long time. When Oliver was younger, he even had like a poster of him in his room and would like look at it all the time and just admire this amazing soccer player. It's now a point where they're on the same soccer team actually and they're co-captains. And Gavin is very grumpy and doesn't really like the fact that he has been teamed up to be a co-captain with Oliver because that's just showing that he's gonna be replaced soon because of how old he's getting. He is close to retirement. His body is kind of like giving out on him. He's experiencing a lot of chronic pain in his life because of how long he's been playing this sport and how much he loves the sport. And so this is the enemies to lovers romance between the two of them because Oliver just like can't help but get under Gavin's skin and like show him that like He's a good person and he needs love too. And oh, I love this one. One of my favorite books from 2022. And also again, this discussion of soccer in this book, fantastic, loved it. Next I have Falling From The Sky by Serena Bowen. This one's a little bit unique compared to the other books I'm gonna talk about today because the sport aspect in here is not front and center because our hero in here, Hank, is actually an ex-professional snowboarder. The reason why I say X is because his last run left him paralyzed. So he is paralyzed from the waist down after his last run and Callie, our heroine in here, is actually his physical therapist. So this is a very forbidden relationship because Callie is one of his doctors, um, but he cannot help himself and totally falls for Callie. This does say this is the second book in a series. Don't read book one, please. Don't do it. I was not a fan. So I was really surprised that I loved this book because I did not enjoy book one. Um, but this one is a total standalone. I really enjoyed this one. The discussion of physical therapy and just like disability in here was great because a lot of people who have disabilities and chronic illnesses like myself we've had to experience a lot of physical therapy in our lives and so I just love the discussion of that in this book but the sports part is more towards the beginning and more discussion based like talking about how Hank like misses his life before his injury. Snowboarding was just like something I want to mention because you don't really get that a lot in our romance books. Another unique one is Falling Embers by Katherine Cowles. This is her second book in the Tattered and Torn series. So this is a like friends to lovers 
romance. Our heroine here is our heroine's brother's best friend, um, but she's also very close with him as well. When she was a teenager, he got her into like BMX bikes, I think that's what they're called, like dirt biking. And from that point on, she like feels like every time she's on a bike or doing something like this, like an extreme sport, she feels like she's flying, like she's living. So she has now kind of like made this her life. She's making money off of it. She's making YouTube videos, doing these extreme sports tricks. Calder, the hero in here, has kind of somewhat regretted a little bit introducing her to all these dangerous sports because he's so worried about her. He's scared for her life. He's also a single dad now. So he has like two little girls that he's looking after as well and knows the importance of like taking care and keeping those you love safe. There's also a suspense element in here that pushes the two of them together. And I really enjoyed this one. And the sports romance aspect was definitely unique because we have this heroine who is so out there and risky and just loves to do like dangerous things, which is cool, like safe. She does it safely, by the way. And also it's really funny because one of the like daughters in here, he has twin daughters, is like so obsessed with skateboarding. She wants to skateboard so bad and um, Hadley is going to like show her the ropes. A hockey one that I'd love to mention is Isn't It Romantic by Lissa K. Adams. I read this one as a standalone. I think I've only read book one in the series and this is book four. So I like jumped and uh, you can totally read this as a standalone. This is the romance between Vlad and Elena and they had a marriage of convenience a few years ago. Uh, Vlad is living in the US because he's a professional hockey player, ice hockey player. And uh, Elena needed to go to America to experience something new in life to go to school in America. So they get in a marriage of convenience so she can get her green card. Vlad is also a part of the Bromance Book Club, which is a book club like all put together by men who just want to learn how to make like their wives happier and like learn things from romance books and after being a part of this book club for a while vlad realizes like he does not want a marriage of convenience with his wife like he wants a real marriage and when he decides to tell elena this like she tells him like I i'm going back to russia like I don't know what to tell you. Turns out the two of them have been secretly pining for each other and I've waited for the other person to pursue the relationship and Elena's kind of done now. She's like, I waited so long for Vlad to pursue me and it's not happening so I'm going back home. And so Vlad is trying to woo his wife. <laughs> I surprisingly really enjoyed this. Uh, the hockey part in here was interesting as well. Like Vlad gets injured one of the in one of the matches he's in and Elena has to come and move in with him and take care of him after his injury. Um, so that adds a little bit of a forced proximity element in here that I obviously adore. <laughs> I also just love Vlad in general in here. It was so sweet and cute. Like I feel like a giant teddy bear. And he also has like a gluten tolerance. So I really related to him with that. So um, this was definitely a surprising read that I definitely enjoyed. Next I have Undone by the Ex-Con by Talia Hibbert. This is a romance between Lizzie and Isaac. So Lizzie is a professional uh, ballet dancer. Um, so that is the sports element in here. Dancing is discussed quite a lot in this book. But at the beginning of this book, her dancing career kind of gets cut short because she gets diagnosed with type one diabetes. This diagnosis completely changes her life and she decides to quit dancing and focus more on her health. She also decides to teach dance instead and she gets hired by a family friend to teach his three daughters ballet. I was really interested in the discussion of dancing and ballet. When you mainly read about sports romances, it's the guy who's doing a sport where it's like hockey or football. So I really like how we're talking about dance. But the guy who hires her to be his daughter's dance teacher has ulterior motives. This man decides to blackmail Lizzie to gain some sought after information from a popular ex-con and writer, Isaac. He really wants her to get close to Isaac and learn some secrets about him. She has to accept because uh, he's blackmailing her and holding some very horrible information that is secret about her brother. So she has to get close to Isaac and as she does this, she, she 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 falls for him. Like she definitely falls for this big burly stoic man. There's definitely an element of like, <laughs> lying and secret identity in here because she's being blackmailed and tricking Isaac at first and trying to get to know him not in the best terms but she definitely falls head over heels in love with him and Isaac does the same for her so I just really love the discussion of dance and dancing in here because dancing is a sport it is hardcore <laughs> that I have make it sweet by Kristen Callahan this one is very similar to falling from the sky in the fact that you have an ex sport player Lucian in here was a very famous ice hockey player but in his last hockey game he got injured so badly he got a really bad concussion which caused him to quit playing because if he got hurt ever again it would cause severe brain damage like it has been advised by his doctors you should not play again. Like 
that is a no-no. So now he lives with chronic migraines that are very, very hard to deal with. So this is his romance with Emma. Lucian lives living in on his grandmother's estate and she has a bunch of like cabins and rentals on her estate. Emma just happens to rent one of them. She is a celebrity. She was on this show that's very similar to Game of Thrones and she played the like Daenerys character and she gets killed off. And she doesn't really know what to do with her career and the rest of her life. So she takes a vacation to this estate and the two of them fall in love, even though Lucian does not want that. Emma also doesn't want that. She just wants like a fun all time. But while they're having fun together, they realize that they are developing real deep, deep emotional ties to each other. This was such a great read and the discussion of concussions and the long lasting things that can happen to you because of it and the discussion of migraines in here was just a great topic to read about um because I really related to them so but Lucian is definitely headstrong and a great hockey player and you can tell he misses the sport so badly next I have tentacles and triathlons by Ashley Bennett you're right this is a monster romance on a sports romance list like can you believe it this is the romance between Reese and Cyrus Reese is the human on the cover and he is actually the brother to the heroine from book one in this series who is also human he has experienced a lot of like trauma um, his father's kind of forced this fear-based mentality of monsters. And so growing up and throughout his adulthood even, he was actually scared of the monsters who live in the same society as him. But then his sister ends up getting engaged to Atlas, a monster creature. And so he's kind of forced into this world he never thought he'd have to be in, which is the monster world. Reese ends up meeting Cyrus, who is this tentacle creature over here, while he is getting to know like all of Atlas's so his sister's fiance's friends, like he ends up meeting Cyrus, who works and no, not works, maybe works. I don't know. He attends the same gym that Atlas runs. Reese is also competing in this triathlon and he's doing really great on his like cycling and his running, but he's not the greatest swimmer. So he really needs to practice and get lessons. So he decides to ask Cyrus to help him. Cyrus, of course, agrees because he is totally besotted by <laughs> Reese immediately when he meets him. And he sees this as the perfect opportunity to just be closer to him and to get to know him more and hopefully help uh Reese get over his aversions to monsters and they end up falling in love this is such a sweet swoony male male romance that I loved so sports is definitely like a major part in here because of the triathlon Reese is constantly practicing like running and cycling but the swimming part in here like I feel like the main sport part is the swimming they're constantly in the pool Cyrus is helping Reese with his swimming a lot in here so there's a lot of swimming lessons and a lot of time in the pool and just building muscle and strength when it comes to swimming so I really enjoyed reading about that because you don't get a lot of swimming romances. The last two books I want to mention are two Cassie Mint novellas that have sports in them. First I have A Big Boxer. By the way these are novellas that can be read as a standalone so be aware of that so you can pick up any of these if you'd like without reading any of the other books in the series. This is the romance between Beck and Lucas Scott. So Lucas is a very popular famous boxer but he feels like he is missing something in his life. He doesn't have the same like groove he had when he was younger as a young boxer and Beck is a sports journalist who writes articles and she ends up witnessing one of Lucas's recent matches and basically writes an article revealing the fact that she thinks that he's lost something and Lucas basically tracks her down comes knocking at her door and is like confronting her about her article <laughs> he's mad at first that this person is writing about him but when she opens the door and he realizes who this woman is like he he becomes entranced <laughs> and just and wants her uh so this is a very short and steamy and fun novella for sure. The boxing aspect in here was really fun because you don't really read a lot about boxing. And the last book that I'd love to mention is Thin Ice by Cassie Mint, which is a figure skating novella. This is just a short, quick novella about Mila and Logan. Mila is a figure skater and Logan is her coach. And so it's a very, very, very forbidden, <laughs> but they just can't keep their hands off of each other. There's an age gap. They have to do stuff secretly in his office, at the rink, like they they do some stuff secretly so i thought this was a very enjoyable read as well and i just love figure skating and i need more figure skating romances in my life leave them down below i've already read from luke off with love so please don't recommend that one that one wasn't my favorite so uh any other figure skating romances leave them down below because i need more in my life anyway so you have it those were some sports romance recommendations for you please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me any sport related emoji in the comment section down below but anyways thank you all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all